Oh man, every time I post a video, people unsubscribe to my channel. Look at that, I just posted here and it went down by two people. What the hell? Anyway, welcome to the old man playmaker devlog. Um, I'm gonna, sh I'm excited to show like what kickstarted um, me working on my game. But if it doesn't work for you, I guess unsubscribe. Anyway, so over the past couple of years, I built out all these prototypes. First thing I wanted to do is figure out how to do post processing effects and do camera movement. So I got this working. I knew that my game, I wanted to have a real life sim simulation. I've got a kid, he doesn't bug me, but I'm just saying, it's kind of just hard to describe what I'm what I'm building. But so I did figure out the post processing with one project and then I started working on my final house layout and mechanics for the timing, how timing would work and pickups. So I built all the logic for collecting things and triggering things like food and finding like pills, how the rooms are gonna get laid out. Like you're gonna have to have do work and things like that. But I was having a tough time figuring out what would be an interesting premise. I got so hung up on getting the environment looking how I want it to look. Like this is the, this is the final house I think I'm gonna use. So I started to build out challenges and, and to make it more interesting and dynamic. But not having your FSMs not collide or globals that you thought you are gonna be able to reuse Things start to get tangled and confusing and at some point it gets unmanageable and at the end of the day it doesn't look interesting to play. So basically I threw everything away and I wrote my script and how everything's going to work from scratch on paper and then went back to the drawing board and I built a functional prototype from scratch. So this project has every single piece I think I need for my game. That doesn't include post-processing effects, cutscenes, and intro and dashboards and all that stuff. There's a there's there's the kid right there. Somewhere there's a cat running around the place. There's basic pickups. Like that would be my pills. If you can see the mechanics on the dashboard on the top upper left, there's my hunger level. If I go into the kitchen, I can cook for myself. See that goes back up. My sleep is, is being depleted. Up here is a representation of the office. And over here, that is my bed. So all the mechanics and triggers are here. And I can actually take all this logic that works. There's a kid. If I actually wait for a while, when the kid gets hungry, he's gonna follow me around and stay in front of my periphery until I cook for him. Uh, that sounds really simplistic, but once you layer all the degrading vision and the stress level and messages from your boss, did you get your work done? The panic will start to set in. Anyway, how do you translate all this stuff into a new project? I mean, you can go ahead, I know you can save templates, but I think knowing the skills off the top of your head is important so you're just not dragging, dropping functions and saying, this'll do this, this'll interact with this. Um, while, while you're still beginning and learning. That's quite a mouthful. So how I did in the beginning, I did documentation. I kind of came up with the nomenclature on paper and you kind of saw this earlier. It was a playmaker sheet where I had oh, AI pathfinding or mouse inspect. I had when you click on an event, you had to have a new state which included a mouse pick and then you needed to set its ray distance, store the value, a, make sure the layer mask is the layer you name, blah, blah, blah. And I thought this was cool like a year ago, but going back and starting up Playmaker again, I'm like, the fuck is, I have no idea what this crap is. So instead of all that, I went back to my project and I'm like, if I just see all these little pieces in one sheet, I would know that like the mouse, you have to have the mouse and you can see over here, it's looking for a key down or a mouse button. And it sets the cursor first on init. I'm like, that's great. How do I put those in notes? That text document? Okay, uh, mouse and spec. Uh, uh, uh. So I just wanted to take all these pieces and put them on one sheet. And each box have all of these represented too. Cause I can, I can read this. What I, what I came up with, it's a workflow preference, but so far 
if I could do this visually, I can jump into a new blank project, read this visual sheet, and start building a project way quicker than I could by importing things or um, looking at those wacky notes. And that's basically this. This is the set of F FSMs that you saw in the game, and they're numbered A, B, C, D, blah, 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 blah. So now the sheet is an exact representation of what there is in the game, all this stuff, but it has all this stuff exploded into one sheet. So there's a, are you, is it a key down or you're actually clicking the mouse down? Then it goes to mouse pick, what's in there? It's a raycast with a bunch of other stuff. You know, how are you gonna write that down? And if you do the, the mouse click, it fires off mouse pick. And then mouse pick is right over here, named right here. And I know it's gonna do a raycast. I set the distance. I'm storing it in something called live item, which is a variable. And down here, I'm just uh, updating my text, debug text. And then I'm setting a variable that something was collected. And then I'm gonna compare those game objects. If it's one that I selected, then it goes off and does something else. If it's equal to, I do pills were clicked, or if it's not equal to, something else was clicked. So obviously, pills clicked. We look for that event. There it is right there. Destroy the pills and spawn a new set. And that's what we do here. So um, this is the entire prototype on one sheet. And it has all the, the timer FSM and how all that works. And it's one thing that I can see. And down here I have listed my global variables. So I set those up ahead of time. And then I just go ahead and um, bang these things out. I probably could somehow save these and import the house, a new house and create the, the, um, the objects and make sure they're named right. But now I can just go back and set up my entire house collectibles and just apply the code directly. And uh, right now I created a brand new to prototype with a new house and this probably took an hour and a half. I'm not sure how much to show if I really wanna make this thing and then distribute it on itch or whatever. In the next video, I'll show you um, this stuff applied to a mammoth realistic looking purchased asset. All right, so hopefully this gives you an idea how you might be able to prototype something with placeholder graphics and just transfer the idea visually on a sheet like this, but use a sheet like this to understand and memorize in sequence. If you do a mouse pick, what has to happen? You do a raycast and then if the raycast stores an item, how you compare it to something else. And if that compares a Boolean yes, what might you wanna do with that? You might wanna destroy it and trigger a global event. And then where does that global event work? It's, it's really cool if you do stuff like this and then start to understand exactly what your clicks go to and how the events interact. Um, don't don't uh, yell at me if um, this workflow is bad, but so far this is the most productive I've been in a couple years and I'm I feel like I'm learning everything I need to do in Unity and Playmaker and go back into the documentation and the Hutong site to get more and more skills as I build along. So, all right, feel free to unsubscribe, I guess. All right, see ya, bye.